try to coax the eight ball in super thin with lots of side, but it didn't work. Alder, as he was so many times Extension this afternoon, called. reprieved. And talk about a thin one from distance. And when you're close to it, even though he was stretched, you feel a little more comfortable like Chua shot. This one here. Oh, cue ball's going to have a lot of speed. This has got to go a little bit still. It should be okay. Watch the white. Foul shots. Well, that is a total clearance. Ball in hand. Nine ball and cue ball into the pocket. And of course, when that happens, it's the now clock. a formality who will win. Yeah, and if you notice, he overcut it a, just a little bit to the pocket. That's why the cue ball opened up. Similar scratch that Alvin had last year. And Annoying when he made that combination and scratched, really Johan turned Schiller that match around with Jason Shaw. Saw the pink four catch a little, the knuckle going in, but just the way he strikes the cue ball. Did he sustain an injury there? I don't know, maybe a cramp or something, maybe? Looked like he was trying to grab kind of his Achilles, really. way over hit that's going to get on the rail and this is going to get super tough surprised he didn't go with more of a high ball and kind of broaden the angle going more towards the head string On the lip, refusing to drop. Christmas for Mustafa Alna. Mustafa Alna wins the rack. Yeah, kind of hooked on him. He was a little thick on it, so you almost have to smooth it around the table so the ball doesn't kind of hydraulic there. It's going to show us one heck of a kick shot. It's the worst kind of hook, Jeremy. Self-imposed. Absolutely, and you know, why he's won some matches it is attacking, but probably, extension called. Probably felt like he may not get there, but Chances are, didn't get snookered. Really, this is problems. I kind of like this route myself, three rails, but it's got to lengthen. Foul shot. Ball in hand. Please start the clock. And I tell you, I saw a little bit of a limp there from Johan when he got out of the chair. Chua could really kind of get on one. Wow. We've seen it time and time again into that pocket. In fact, Alna was a, a victim of that pocket in that far jaw early on against Filler this afternoon. They will not fall. position if he's got to go rail first he's got to get the speed right this may open up for some kind of look at the eight but certainly not what he wanted and that's what I saw a couple times right the slick table was a little different than the outer one and it takes a little experience to get used to it and I got enough to play a safety though it looks like Just 
just wants to knock the eight two cushions to where he's standing, holding the cue ball behind the nine. Oh, he went for the bank. His game plan, not exactly orthodox. It wasn't against Filler. Now, you see there, in many respects, Chua missed the eight ball by more than the seven before it, but he caught the near jaw and went in. Yeah, a little slide on the ball. And... Johan Chua points the rack. He's queuing down, though. Maybe going for the bank. Oh. Foul shot. And the reason why I didn't mind going for the shot I was talking about, even if he didn't Ball get the happened. snooker, I just kind of feel like Alnar is struggling Please at the moment. The so I hate to give him an easy starter. Now, I didn't imagine ball in hand, of course, but... You know, let the guy get some strokes in, right? Get some time at the table. Just like any player, they become a lot more difficult to play. Now the rack on his side, especially going into the, the ad break. Can sit there with a little bit of confidence. He was 4-2 down to filler in one. The nine ball here to be 4-2 down and with renewed hope against Chua. Fortune attached there, though. Yeah, I thought he hit a little light, really, but it's a little light as well. You just got to chip this off the left side and come right off the side cushion, trying to get the cue ball back and somewhat the position it's in now. Being on the rail, I really don't like the right side of the six. I like the left side of the six much better. Well, in a spirit of fairness, I'm really glad the cue ball came to rest for shape on the eight because that was the best pot of the match so far by a mile. One of the best ones that we've seen all week. He's got to make another one here. That looks good. The six, Johan Schuer, reminiscent of the inspirational stuff that was on display from Johan Schuer. For Team Asia to perform so well there, of course, right there in Manila, the inaugural Moscone Cup. But I think uh, I think the fans are going to have be a big home home court advantage for for Team Asia. That's got to go a little bit. Pretty good. I think Europe are at a distinct advantage with the Moscone Cup. When you think about it, the, the captain of the Reyes Cup might want to give Mickey Krause a, a run out there to see how he fares in that team environment. Yeah, I was thinking about that earlier. I don't know if the timing is going to work out for Foul that shots. or not. Um, you know, I think it probably Falling will, out. but not 100% because I think the third guarantee Please comes after clock. Hanoi. And they usually do the next picks within a week's time or so. Well, I certainly haven't commentated on him yet. So if he has, it is just the, the single match. Maybe not at all. Yeah, I think maybe now I'm wrong. It was table one. He's Extension played a couple of matches. Okay, 
it's pretty perfect here. Just got to get into the cue ball a little bit. The composer Johann Strauss was famous for his waltzes. It appears as though Johann Chua is waltzing towards victory. Johann Chua wins the rap. How can you have any other impression? He leads by seven racks to two. How many times have we seen that? It always seems to be the seven ball as well, playing with power, drawing in one of those pockets at that end of the table. Yeah, he kind of misplayed a real first earlier. Same kind of shot, even coming off the right side, he needs a thin hit. Yeah, you see how he caught it thick and the ball kind of hydraulics. Got to learn to come down the table a little smoother. I don't know. He may go into the nine here. Not the type of shot you want to add side spin, really, especially going up and down the table. Extension called. Just can't afford to miss them. You just cannot afford to miss them. Especially when you stick them. Yeah, and he did put inside spin on that cue ball. That was surprising. Just got a little quick with it and caught a little too much deflection with the right spin, overcut the eight. And she was going to get to her two games away from that semifinal. Johan Schiller wins the rack. Doing nothing outlandish. That came out of the blue. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying he's supposed to miss it, but I thought he'd do a little more on the seven, to be fair. That pocket has been pretty greedy, but that one was on Johan. Hasn't left anything easy, especially considering Al Norris had some troubles. He's drawn this ball. On table one, a quarter final is in the process of turning around. Is this one going to turn? On the hill. Maybe we should be calling him the dedicated Dane because he most certainly is. Absolutely. has spent a lot of time in his young life trying to master this game and he's on his way. Well, he really unloaded on that one. The hardest.
hard as he's hit the entire time. A little kick on the nine. Wow. This afternoon, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz completed the two with a, a golden break. I thought we were going to see an action replay. That was millimeters away. Yeah, and, and now Alnar, you got to believe, is going to chase that nine ball with the cue ball off the right side of the one. Why not? Any contact would have done any kind of nudge. And really kind of hard. Wow, it did get a nudge. Just came off that second cushion. Just rocked it a hair. Extension called. Yeah, it needed the nudge on the way there, not on the way back. Now, Johan made a similar shot early in the match on the one. Almost identical, really. The World Cup wonder now showing it as an individual. You'd like to get an early combination, but from the layout I see it's going to be an 8 9 to get him to the semifinal. Oh, did he expect to go into the 8? Does he not see the 3? I'm not sure. I don't think he saw the 3 was on the bottom rail. Lock him up here. Well. So you're saying, Jeremy, that was a brain freeze? I think so. Look how narrowly he missed the nine. Looked like he couldn't fit a playing card between the nine and the cue ball. Little surprised he didn't play safe behind those two balls that was near the three. Now those have gotten rearranged. All growing a little ragged now, isn't it? <laughs> he was watching the replay there. And what happens in replays is that it shows what's happened originally. There is no change in the script. And I don't think he's grimacing really about the miss nine. You know, not there at the end of that replay or what we saw. What a hit there. To hit it so delicate from distance, elevated with the cue, that shows you the talent. Now he's got a little angle to stun over. Don't miss this four trying to get too good on this five nine. You can make it from almost anywhere underneath the purple. His first title of note <laughs> was an event sponsored by Manny Pacquiao. I think Johan Chua here in for the knockout blow. Yes, Mustafa Alna counted out. It's 10 4 to Johan Chur into the semi finals. The Filipino with a big smile on his face, and there with his partner from the World Cup last year and his great friend James Aranas. might not be known to our TV viewers, but he's known around Europe. OK, answers on a postcard. What shot has SVB tried here? I think he actually played 
of this shot at the UK Open against Tyler Steyer. It's, a, it's an unusual safety. It's like a, a really hard bank shot. He was trying to get it back on the bottom rail in the middle. He's under hit it. Yeah, that was a great match, that. Van Boning seen off his fellow American star in a Hill Hill finish to get through to the last 16, then lost to Eklund Kachi. Answers on a postcard is a very old fashioned term for someone like you to be using, Carl. Answers via TikTok, maybe something like that now. Spending too much time with you and Phil Yates. So Francisco Sanchez Ruiz Francisco went Sanchez for the early win, well. didn't get it. He's got it in more conventional fashion in the end. I was just thinking about the junior still there, Michael, and if you remember at the World Championships, we had the Saudi Junior Open. Felix Vogel won that one. He also played here, but he played in the main event. And he had a couple of close matches. My memories, I can't quite remember who he played. But I remember, in fact, I'll tell you who he played. He played Mickey Krause earlier on. Oh, yeah. And it was a close match. It might have even been Hill Hill. So this is the presentation. Joshua Filler, so disappointed to exit the tournament, the main event earlier today. His wife, Pia, who we saw playing in this tournament. Indeed, she had a match on the main table. And they are so thrilled to be jointly hosting this junior tournament. He's almost as tall as Joshua. He's only 14. Then again, Josh isn't much older. So easy to use cliches like wonderful scenes and things like that. But it's all true. It really is. Just such an incredible experience. And again, it's also easy to talk about how that sets these players up for their careers and shows them what it's all about. But again, that's all true as well. And they went through the ringer, both of them, with those misses we saw late on, clearly feeling the pressure. But it was a confident finish from Benko that got it done in the end. FSR has played for the bank and you couldn't really put it any better if you had ball in hand. Not only have you got to pot the ball here, you've got to make sure you get position on the red three as well. Can he hold it softly? Yes, he can. And there's the bank. The worst case scenario there would have been the two ball stayed over the pocket. Yeah, as you say, he's still at the table. And for anyone who might not be familiar with nine ball, that's such a big part of it, isn't it? Being in control of the situation and being able to impact what happens next. Yeah, even there, he didn't have any, you know, great hook to play. He's just played a containing safety, hoping to get back to the table with something a bit easier. See how much he wanted that flick off the four. And it's turned out very sweet. Great pot. Went in very clean as well, didn't it? He's looking good. I know it's still early days, but he's got that little spring in his step that he often does. Although he made the final day of the Premier League, he ended up finishing in last place of the half dozen who got to that decisive day. So this is first really good run in a matchroom event this year. <laughs> looking sharp, looking confident. And two clear for the first time in the match. It's 3 1. 30 second shot clock. You're allowed one extension of an additional 30 seconds per rack.
fundamentals of the game, if you're not familiar with them either. And one thing you've got to do is hit the lowest numbered ball remaining on the table first. So long as you do that, any pot keeps you at the table. So if, for example, the two is the lowest remaining ball and you play that onto the five to pot it, well, that's a combination, and you stay at the table. And the winner of the rack is whoever pots the nine, irrespective of who's potted what balls prior to that. Foul strike, ball in hand. You have a little wry smile there, Ruiz. Please stop the clock. It's never quite easy, you know, to tie the ball up, but it's always an option if you feel like you can't hit your object ball and get it safe. Tying a couple of balls up is never the end of the world. I actually thought in the Feder Gorse Skyler Woodward match, Gorse could have just rolled the eight ball onto the seven, tie them two balls up, and take a bit of a gamble. Anyway, it's not paid off this time. Shane's in. All the balls are in the open. I know I say that a lot about the balls being in the open, but in practice, you clear these up every time. I wonder how many racks of nine ball Shane Van Bowen has played in his mm -hmm. life. Yeah, I'm going to be thinking about that now for the rest of the night. Well, he played five so far in this match. And he's won two of them. Notice the logo, FSR 91 on his back. That was the year he was born. Extension cool. This goes up into the pocket where the nine ball and the three ball is. But he's got to draw the cue ball off the right and side rail, just above middle, in between the brown ball, like you can see. Oh, he might go forward off two rails, actually. Let's have a look. Yeah, so it's the first shot I thought, and he's made it. Now he's got this combination to tie it up. And there's the trophy moment again for young Max Benko. Shane Van Boney's picked up a few of those in his time. Simple combination. Extension called. Cool. Just about to say, there can't have been many instances this week of someone putting together three breaking runs in a row. And he goes and does that. Yeah, look where it hits. It's just far too wide. Has he been fortunate? That was a better look. Well, yep, too far. Can I get more central of the pocket? Extension cool. That will frustrate him. Massio. Pots the nine down the rail to go 6-4 up over the US Moscone Cup captain. Yeah, Massey all edging ever closer to the semi-final clash of two of the most promising young European players, he and Mickey Krause, both still in the first half of their 20s. Where's this ball finish? He can shoot it up into the top corner, which he will do. There's no way he's going to try and attempt the middle from there. <laughs> 12-4. 
twice across with a cue ball hit. You can't just sort of roll it in hold position so it'll come back over to the left side of the table, then back over towards the brown seven. Still shaking his head. I think he's still shaking his head because of the missed four ball. Yeah, he does his share of head shaking generally. I think it just reflects the perfectionist within him and the immensely high standards he expects of himself. Just devotes his whole life to the game, spent so much time practicing, coming up to tournaments and then between matches at the venue. And he expects it all to be worthwhile by producing a remarkable level of pool. And he's going pretty well at the moment. Yes, he had that very unexpected miss on the four in the side. But he can forget about it now because it hasn't ended up costing him. Van Boning makes it five on the spin. Yet we don't talk a great deal about him. table time has he recently it's been a bit of a spectator he's had the best seat in the house and now he's got to he's got to try and play a kick and stick to a degree when I say kick and stick I mean just keep the cue ball in this little corner and hopefully the red three ball finds a little gap and goes back up towards the top of the table for distance that's the idea here Not worked out how he would like, but believe me, these are not easy when you're behind them, but it is a chance for SVB. He's got a long pop on the red three. Extension call. Cool. Noise. After Shane hit the cue ball, then you could see some sort of movement with his hands on the slate. That's because he was right behind the shot and he knew it wasn't going to be potted cleanly. SV, uh, Skyler Woodward, rather, he's not going to give up. That pulls him just two behind. Another stellar rack for Shane Van Boning. Early on, this was looking like it was really going to be a close tussle. I think we all expected that from the start, and we may yet get it, but it isn't looking likely at the moment. Seven racks in a row for Shane Van Boning. Foul stroke, all in hand. Well, we talk about the chaos and the balls flying round the table and a random one falling in here and there. I guess eventually, if you do that, start the clock. it's going to be the cue ball. Yeah, from time to time, the cue ball will find the pocket. It seems it's found the pocket at the right time for FSR. What's he got in the bag? He's five behind. He's got ball in hand. Sanchez Ruiz getting to the last 16 there was maybe just a slight taste of what was to come for him over the next couple of years and on that occasion he won and then of course in the UK Open semi-final he won 11-4 and it was around that time that he was really starting to get a good run going. So earlier on in his career he struggled to beat Van Boning in more recent years. 
He's done it on multiple occasions. But while I was going through all that past history, back in the present day, things have not gone to plan here. Jumping over the nine. Has he flipped it? He hasn't. No, it didn't quite have the gas to get there. And this is looking pretty ominous now. So that was a really good chance for Sanchez Ruiz off the scratched break to stem this tide. It's threatening to sweep away his European Open dreams. Three balls for Van Boning to get to the hill. Yeah, this is thinner than it looks. I'm not saying he's going to make a mess of it, but it's still thinner than you think. Yeah, it's fine. Now, Daniel Massiol, as you can see, is a ball away from getting to within one of the hill. This isn't the sort of nine you want to leave yourself at a key stage of one of the biggest matches you've ever played. Massiol for 8 5. Extension, Ooh. cool. It could have turned out worse. Yeah, the funny shots then, Michael, because, I mean, we didn't see the positional shot, but we know full well he's under it, you know, to get on the nine, and that happens a lot in nine ball, you know, where the nine Extension ball cold. often sits around the rack. You play the eight ball from top end of the table, come down, leave yourself that 50-yard, and we've all missed them. Shane Van Boning. Van Boning scratched off the break. Sanchez Ruiz had the chance to make him... He never leaves you without one of those, does he? There's always a great moment to remember, one that captures the attention of everyone and just looks wonderful in slow motion. Yeah, all five of the American Moscone Cup team from last December were in the draw for the European Open. Tyler Steyer had to pull out, particularly disappointing for him after winning those two smaller events in the US. But of the four who did make it here, they all got to the last 16. And of course, Carl, we've got the prospect of an all-American final, Van Bonin and Woodward. They've been to a World Cup final together. They could be facing each other for the European Open title tomorrow because they're in opposite halves of the draw. Done it. It's no good. Semi final. Was in two of them in the matchroom open events last year. Both times it took the eventual winner to knock him out. Says of forward. just playing as well as he can and seeing where it takes him. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz wins the match. taken him there is his first break and run of the match. So only a few minutes ago it was 9 3. It's still a very long road back, but he must start the day as favourite to end the wait. But how about that call? Yeah, didn't quite get on the six ball how he wanted, so still work left in this match, and believe me, 9-5 can soon turn into 9-8. It can soon turn into 9-8. And it looks as though it's certainly going to turn into 9-6 now. Well, it was all about the previous shot. It was a test on the six, and... Playing that under the pressure that's just started to build. It's a unique sort of pressure when you just start to have those feelings that a match that looked to be all but one could slip away from you. 
Well, this is routine stuff now for the Spaniard. So Van Boning was three balls away from making it into the last four. But he's still being made to wait. Sanchez Ruiz must surely feel he's still got a real chance here. He's back to 9-6. Still got to win. Another four on the bounce, though. It's 9-6, Van Boning. Oh, hang about. Oh, the scratch could have been decisive, but it's still not great. Yeah, he'd prefer it there than in the bucket, though, wouldn't he? Well, he showing Van Boning's hand because he'd have had ball in hand. Decision time at 9-3. He may have been sat in his chair thinking, I'm done. Quarterfinals for me. Game over. Tournament over. But now at 9-6. It's only four racks. And it's not really four racks, as crazy as it sounds. It's all about sort of trying to get to that 9-8. If you can win two racks... Can you imagine how much pressure SVB is going to be under? Extension call. Yeah, and of course, if he gets to 9 8, he's breaking to get to the hill. Forcing a decider on which he'd be breaking again. This just underlines how possible it is to this winner breaks format to pull off big recoveries. Seen a couple of them already today. Another chance in open play. I think that was pushing the ball out a little bit too much for me. It was a very low percentage jump shot, and he may pay the price. We see it in other Q sports when players are well behind in matches. They decide, right, I'm just going for everything. Do you think that's what he's doing here? Yeah, I think he is. In their last 16 matches. Surely Shane Van Boning gets the job done now. But no one ever said surely, did they, Carl, about something they were actually sure about? We were saying those things, weren't we, in the previous rack? Left himself the tough six, and he was playing it under a bit of additional pressure because of the fact that a match that looked to be all but done and dusted was just being thrown into a little bit of doubt. He can forget all about that if he takes care of these four. And this time, he's nicer on the six. Yeah, slightly overrun just to just to make this finish a little more exciting. Obviously, if he was straight. It's over. So he's just got to judge it off the one rail. It won't be a great deal for Sanchez Ruiz to look back on and criticise himself about. Well, never seen this before. Cue ball clean, two shots in a row. Thanks. The final day of the European Open includes the semi finals and the final. Shane Van Boning has been around for the final day in both of this tournament's two previous stagings. He got to the final, and indeed within two racks of the title in 22. He was a semi-finalist last year. And now he's going to take his European no, 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 Open challenge that? all the way to the Come last day six. once again. Shane Van Boning was simply wonderful for his spell in the middle of that match when he won eight racks in a row. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz made him wait a bit longer by taking three on the spin himself, but Van Boning has got it done. He has won by 10 racks to six, and he is through to face Johan Chua, the World Cup winner from the Philippines, in the semi-finals tomorrow.